a student is attempting to move a 31 kilogram mini fridge into her dorm room. During a moment of inattention, the mini fridge slides down 35 degree incline at constant speed. Let me highlight that. That seems significant. When she applies a force of 24 Newton acting up and parallel to the incline. All right. Um, so the reason I highlight the phrase at constant speed is uh, sometimes the physics problem reading is like a decoding. We give you pertinent information in a language which sounds plain and it is plain, but you have to pause and think about what it really means to actually use it in your problem solving. So here when it says constant speed, what it's saying is acceleration is equal to zero as this fridge is sliding down. You know, to, for it to start sliding down, it did accelerate at the very beginning. But the question is asking you about that. It's asking you about as it's sliding down at constant speed. And during the time that we are being asked about, acceleration is zero. So that means net force while it's sliding down is also equal to zero. So sometimes we call this a dynamic equilibrium where things are moving, but the, the net force is equal to zero. But that. anyways, so, um, so what's important is for you to recognize that. And then, um, so let's just start out with a diagram. So the diagram of this setup looks like um, you have the um, dorm room, uh, I guess it's not telling me where the incline is coming from, but there is some incline somewhere, somehow. Um, and I guess uh, she's, I uh, don't know if she's moving up or she's moving it down. Uh, it doesn't matter. There's an incline and there's a fridge sitting on top of that incline, which um, from the way they're giving us, uh, they're asking us about coefficient of kinetic friction, there is a friction that we are gonna worry about. And um, the student, it says she is pushing this um, up the incline. All right. And it's sliding down. Oh yeah, normally the sliding down part uh, wouldn't be important, except for the fact that we are dealing with a friction. Because uh, friction force, the direction of friction force depends on the direction of motion. So we are going to have to remember that there's going to be a friction force that's uh, acting in the opposite direction from the direction in which fridge is sliding. All right, I, I feel like I have enough information here. So let me draw the free body diagram. Uh, so I'm, I'm moving into standard strategy. Um, so the free body diagram uh, here, we are drawing Free body diagram of the fridge, as uh, if there isn't really much confusion here. Um, so, what are the forces acting on the fridge? Well, uh, I like to start with the gravity because it's always there. <laughs> it's one force that I can't get wrong. So, there's always going to be gravity. So, mg pulling it down. Am I given mass? Okay, I am given mass of the fridge. All right. And once you have gravity and you realize it's not in free fall, then there should be normal force also. All right, that's good. Um, and we are being told that she's applying a force that's acting up and parallel to the incline. So, all right, let me draw that apply the force here. Uh, I'm trying to draw it perpendicular to normal force. Um, it, I mean, it doesn't have to look uh, like two scale, but uh, it helps uh, helps you avoid um, drawing um, kind of wrong conclusions in an intuitive way uh, if your drawing is reasonably correct. Uh, like right angles look like right angles, and things that are not right angles don't look like right angles. All right, so there's that apply the force and. Uh, Oh, and because it's sliding down, the friction force is in the same direction as I drew before. So friction force is also in that direction. 
All right. Then at this point, it's time to ask the question. One, um, does this look right? Did I, I, I say, did I um, not draw any forces that don't exist? And two, did I draw all the forces? And um, each time I drew each one of the force arrows, I justified it. So I'm pretty sure I didn't draw anything that doesn't exist. So the only question is two, did I draw all the forces? Does this look right? Does this appear to be consistent with the zero acceleration? And um, I guess uh, from this view, it's not necessarily obvious. I think if you kind of skip ahead to step number two, and imagine drawing the usual tilted axis, then, um, then it appears consistent because you have um, Y component of forces going both ways, the normal force and the Y component of gravity, and you have X component of forces going both ways, the X component of gravity and the, the other X component of forces. So you have two opposing forces, two or more opposing forces in each direction. So, um, so yeah, so we can make acceleration equal to zero. That's what I really mean when I ask, did I draw all the forces? Can I make acceleration go in the direction I know it needs to go? All right, so that's uh, good. Um, then uh, I guess I am picking this axis. Technically, I do have complete freedom to choose whatever axis I want when I have um, uh, zero acceleration. And I did say earlier that I tend to pick straight axis. But here, the reason I'm picking tilted axis is I'm looking at the number of components I need to break down. Most of the forces are already along the direction either vertical, uh, perpendicular to the surface or along the surface. So if I choose my axis to go along the surface, that makes my job so much easier um, because then the only force I end up, uh, end up needing to break down is going to be the gravity into Y and X components. Otherwise, I need to break three forces into components. And you know, you can do it, it's just more hassle. It's more work than there needs to be. <laughs> so, so, um, so that's why I'm going in the tilted axis. And I kind of started doing step number three already, <laughs> breaking forces into components. I drew uh, uh, components of the gravity. And uh, working through the same exercise I did earlier, you should be able to identify this as theta. Uh, so let me write down the expression for the components. The adjacent side is going to be mg cosine theta. And the opposite side is going to be mg sine theta. And I think that's it. Um, all right, no other forces to break down. So I'm done with the step number three. That means the uh, diagram I have here should give me a complete set of information necessary for me to solve this uh, question or you know, do step number four, which will give me complete information to solve this question. So let's uh, write down Newton's second law equations. Net force along the x direction and net force along the y direction. Once I'm done with the step number three, once again, this is just an exercise in reading information off the diagram. So what are my x forces? I have, um, this force here going in the X direction, oh, and I have the applied force and the friction force going in the other direction in the, along the X direction. So let me write this down. Uh, uh, the positive X forces are mg sine theta, and then the negative X forces minus the applied force minus the friction force is equal to here, even though it's moving, uh, I worked out that acceleration should be zero, so zero acceleration. All right, net force in the y direction. Uh, I have two forces here, the normal force and the y component of gravity. So uh, I guess normal force is positive. And minus mg cosine theta is equal to zero. 
All right, that's it. That's the end of step number four. And as usual, I always count my equations and my unknowns. It's good to identify early on if I have all the <laughs> necessary information. So um, mass known, G known, theta known, um, apply the first known, they gave me 24 newtons. So friction force is not known. Um, and I have normal force, uh, which is also not known technically yet. Oh, this is a weird situation. <laughs> so, um, wait, is it weird? Uh, uh, uh. So if they had asked me for friction force, then sure, I have here, I can solve it for friction force. Good, I'm done. Goodbye. <laughs> um, if they had asked me for normal force, then here it is. I can solve this for normal force. Good, I'm done. Goodbye. Unfortunately, they haven't asked me for either. Instead, they asked me for coefficient of kinetic friction, which means technically I have three unknowns because the, one, the unknown I want to solve for um, is one of the unknowns in my Newton's law equation. But once you have all this written out, then you know what you need to write down now to get the third equation. It's to relate the friction force with the normal force, which is the formula for kinetic friction. The kinetic friction force is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Or anticipating what we'll do later, the coefficient is the ratio of the friction force to normal force. All right, so I think it's clear that what I have to do. I have to solve each of the equations, equation one and two, for each of these quantities, friction force and normal force, then take the ratio. So, um, so let's do that. Uh, this time, I guess um, I'll just go straight from this equation, solving it for the friction force, just move everything else to the other side. Mg, wait, uh, yeah, watching the signs. <laughs> so um, I think it's actually easier moving the friction force to the other side. So everything else remains, which is mg sine theta minus f. And I have numbers to plug in all there. And then let me write out the normal force. Normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. And if I want, I guess I can write out an analytical expression for this. Um, it's going to be mg sine theta minus f divided by mg cosine theta. But it doesn't really simplify because of this f here. It, uh, m's don't cancel, g's don't cancel. You're just gonna need to uh, uh, plug in the numbers and um, all the units should cancel out and you should get some dimensionless quantity. That's what the question is asking for coefficient of kinetic friction here. 